Lift Your Skinny Fist Like uh, Antennas to Heaven is the second studio album by the post-rock band Godspeed You Black Emperor. Um, I've heard of these uh, guys' name. I've heard, you know, they were a pretty big influence on the genre or on the post scene, I guess. Or, you know, they are, in a way, one of the bigger bands in the genre. Although I'm not a really big fan of post rock because... Well, you do have to have quite an ear for it, since it is kind of eerie, noisy music. Uh, and if you love it, you love it, but... Uh, or if you like if you like it, you love it, but, you know, it's kind of the same thing. But for me, I'm kind of an inexperienced post-rock uh, listener. I'm overall not, you know, uh, quite excited for it as other people. Uh, but this was a pretty interesting album. This is also their most acclaimed record. It has five stars on All Music, four and a half by All Music, but, you know, they don't understand. But I think I kind of prefer them, or I prefer, you know, their rating, as in uh, other than five stars. Uh, because this is uh, overall a great record, I cannot deny that, and this by the way requested by Rock Do. But I do feel that uh, this record, or the post -rock, rock genre in general, is missing something. I'm not sure if every post rock band has this, but. Um, but this record, or maybe their entire discography, don't they don't have a lead singer. And because of that, this is an entire instrumental um, album. So, I'm not sure if um, Godspe Godspeed You Black Emperor is like that. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if they are. Because, you know, their debut, F... Uh, number A number, Infinite, what the fuck, we really weird, um, so they're kind of an industrial band, I suppose, pose rock, experimental rock, instrumental rock, there we go, and dark ambient, uh, yeah, they don't have a, all oh, guest musicians are credited, yeah, they don't have a lead singer, so I'm pretty sure all of the records are vocal less, or how do you say that? They don't, they don't have any vocals. Which is kind of F for me. I do like me some vocals. Uh, but it isn't on air. Uh, but I still like the piece. This is kind of like a silent film or something really. Because the record is 87 minutes long. It is really uh, atmospheric. And kind of sounds like a sort of soundtrack album thing-ish. I don't know. But it is a studio album. It's almost 90 minutes long, movie length, no vocals, kind of sounds, soundtrack-ish. So this has a lot of um, hints or concepts to a um, to a movie or something, which I do, which I do like. I do like um, that the record kind of has a concept going on, I'm not sure if it is a concept. Um, the album has four tracks, four like... Uh, epic tracks and it has 9, 12, uh, it has 19 different subject matters or different titles I suppose like kind of different sections I guess the first one is terrible canyons of static very static track starts off very you know noisy and very experimental uh, which builds up to atomic clock which is nice, it is kind of an explosion and then kind of, you know, lets you hear the aftermath of the of the explosion. Tar Chart 3 is kind of like their catchy sounding song and it's kind of really short. Uh, this record, by the way, doesn't have any catchy sort of melody or kind of something like that. Well, you know, the record doesn't melody in my opinion, but it is really, it sounds very haunted, you know, it sounds very haunted, haunting, very creepy. It isn't your, you know, this record is kind of the opposite of the top, of the top 40 chart. Really depressing, really sad, really atmospheric, actually good. Uh, then we have World Police and Friendly Fire, which is kind of, uh, it's 9 minutes and 48 seconds long. 
and this song just kind of goes everywhere. This song is mainly, or this transition is mainly just about, um, about you know, a policeman just bat battering on everybody, uh, in, you know, opposed to a certain group of people. Um, so Godspeed, Godspeed you Black Emperor is talking about a lot of uh, heavy, heavy subject matters here or they're not really talking, they're more portraying it with their instruments. Um, so yeah, so actually by the way, these titles don't make any sense unless you interpret it, interpret it, you know, your own thing out of it or they literally don't mean anything, they, they're just open for interpretation, which I already said. Or they actually mean something, but you know, you have to ask the band members to really explain themselves, which they're pro probably not gonna do, because this is a very uh, unique record, to say the least. Or I actually forgot, oh fuck no, I actually forgot the first side, fuck no, I, I, I already went to side two. Uh, we have Lift Your Skinny Fist Like Antennas to Heaven, which is the brilliant opening uh, song. Uh, very great, a lot of um, ominous shadows to it, a lot of ominous uh, atmosphere to it. Great song to start it off, very atmospheric and just, yeah, very, you know, dark and melodic. Um, then we have Gathering Storm uh, to Plut A Morir. Clatters like worry. I have no idea what what that means, but this is kind of like their most experimental track on there. Very very noisy, like my phone just went off. Uh, very noisy and very heavy on you know the the rock instruments. It sounds very distorted and sounds very heavily. Um, yeah, this this song is very disjointed and sounds very haunted, but it is kind of like um, I I. I don't want to say that name over and over again, but Godspeed you Black Emperor. I mean that name is so fucking long and so ridiculous, man. Uh, welcome to Arco AMPM Lex, which is kind of like you know their kind of their welcoming song. Wel welcoming song, you know, you know, just imagine kind of like a Sergeant Pepper or something, but then um, like it's got atom at atomic uh, nukes or something, and that is like this this song. It is kind of like that. Uh, Cancer Towers on Holy Road Highway, which is a pretty powerful title, I would say. You know, people. I'm not sure if you know you have actual artists, artists bands that use Cancer in the wrong way. But if you use it like this, you know, as in Cancer Towers on Holy Road, kind of like a poisonous uh, towers that kind of poison the wealth, or they may be talking about radio stations or something like that. That you know they. They uh, talk shit into your head and into your brain, which is a really powerful thought and is actually really true though. I, I wouldn't, well yeah, I would actually disagree or I would actually agree with cancer because you know, radio stations and stuff like that is really cancerous I think, you know, it's, it just really makes people lazy and they don't, you know, discover other music. And yeah, they're kind of a cancer because they really make people lazy and stuff like that and they don't let people explore, they just play the same shit over and over again. So yeah, this title, is really this title is really powerful and accurate if it is supposed to mean, you know, that or something else maybe. But if it isn't about that, then it is, uh, again, a really creative uh, part or a really creative thought on my part. Yeah, and then we have these songs that I already talked about, Terrible Canyons, Atomic Clock, Chart 3, which, uh, you know, Terrible Canes of Static, Static Song, um, very heavy on, you know, the static counter, very disjointed, very ominous. Atomic Clock kind of, you know, uh, the nuke of that, the nuke. And, um, you know, uh, let's hear the aftermath. And then we have Chart 3, uh, kind of one of the more catchier songs, World Police and Friendly Fire, kind of their answer to, you know, the, um, uh, what is the thing? Um, to the police actually battering everybody. It sounds very, uh, very haunted again, and very uh, dark and very, uh, you know, unapologetic in a way. Plus the buildings they are sleeping now, which I haven't talked about yet. What the fuck was my phone doing? Uh, nothing. No. What the fuck? 
Young blood. What the fuck is my phone playing? What the fuck? Alright. My phone is playing garbage, but I don't know why. Um, but. Uh, there we go. Plus the buildings they are sleeping now. I'm not sure what this song is about, but this is a really avant-garde, really silent track. Um, which is kind of, you know, it is kind of their sleeper song. It is very quiet and very moody. Uh, but I still do like that delivery. Very haunting, yet very relaxed. And then we have Murray Austral. They don't sleep anymore on the beach, which is kind of um, their opening song of Sleep, of Side 3. Which is kind of like, you know, the, the the man that tells the story. I believe there's literally a translator or kind of a, a spoken word on there. Sample or something like that that actually talks about the, um, you know, why people don't sleep anymore on the beach. Because it's haunted and stuff like that. And then we have Monheim, which is um, kind of the story, the truth to be told. Kind of the Monheim monster or something like that. This song is uh, gigantic. I believe it is the longest song of the, of the record. Yeah, it's 12 minutes and 14 seconds long. Uh, the longest subject matter is also sleep, which is tw 23 minutes and 17 seconds. Uh, so Monheim is the longest track and this song is really epic, it sounds very scary and sounds very creepy, very haunted as well again. Uh, this song overall just portrays every emotion that, um, that the record wants you to hear. Uh, so this is a very powerful track and I did really like it overall. And then we have Broken Windows, Locks of Love Part 3. Um, and I believe the band is, or the band is not talking, but the band is portraying some sort of um, destiny here, like, you know, the windows are broken, so you cannot climb the window, or cannot go through the windows, because they're fucked, and otherwise you're gonna cut yourself. And, you know, they're locked, or they're locked or something, the doors are locked, locks of love, we will always love you. Um, or something like that part 3, which is kind of, I think, the, you know, side 3, sleep 3, something like that. Uh, but this is a very, very forgiving track. This song sounds very like a credit song or something like that. The song is very creepy. It sounds kind of romantic while, you know, you're doomed and fucked at the same time. It sounds like that. Uh, the song overall portrays a lot of different emotions to the, to the record. And overall, it's kind of, you know, a beautiful way to end sleep. Uh, then we have Moya Sings, Baby O, which is kind of, you know, we have a lot of transition songs on there, so I'm not going to talk about them too long. Moya Sings, Baby O, which is kind of, you know, a lullaby. Edgy, uh, edgy, fuck no, edgy's, edgy swings, uh, fuck no. I cannot speak anymore. Um, edgy swing set asset, which is kind of their most creative title ever, but it's only 58 seconds long, so there's not a lot going on. There's just a really a lot of creepy and noisy shit. Then we have a Glockenspiel do it recorded on the campsite in Rhinebeck, which actually sounds very accurate because the song is only 47 seconds long. We have a lot of transitions on there, so I don't really care for those. And then we have Attention Mon Amiel. Fa la 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 uh, 55th Saint Laurent, I have no idea what they just did there but they're kind of you know I believe talking about or kind of warning you for what is going to come or are about to tell the story about the attendance to heaven I guess and the girl she dreamed she was a bulldozer she dreamed she was alone in an empty field I have no idea what the title means, but it sounds very deep. Uh, you know, literally bulldozer uh, digging. Um, I have no idea what this song is on about, but the song sounds very haunted. It sounds very creepy again. Those are mainly the two uh, feelings I have towards this record. Very haunting, very creepy, very lonely, very sad. It has a lot of, you know, um, it feels like that. It feels a lot like that. It's exactly like that. Uh, this song is very heavy, this song is um, kind of lonely as well, there's a lot of beautiful, I believe, piano on it, there's a lot of great orchestration on it. Uh, yeah, the, the song overall just sounds very emotional, this is arguably the song that is going to hit you the most if you're going to listen to this record. Then we have Def, Def Camp Drone, which is kind of the story 
that uh, you know the girl has died or something because she was digging her own grave in a way maybe and she's talking about the death camp drone now that you know she's gonna that the drones are gonna take her away and are gonna send the antennas to heaven which is the last track um, and this is just kind of an ending credit song not a lot going on in there very you know it just ends the record it just you know um, it just finishes up the line to sprint to it and you know finish so there we go uh, you know this song points the attendance to heaven you know lift your skinny fist like attendance to the heaven stuff like that and the song ultimately ends it all for the girl and for the story and for the listeners so there we go uh, overall this record was very long it was almost a um, you know a full feature length it was almost nine minutes long. I actually wanted to do this review uh, last week, but it was so fucking long I didn't want to do it. But you know, I did it now, so there we go. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this album review. Let me know what you think about this record. Lift your skinny fist like in Thames to the Heaven. By Godspeed you Black Emperor. That, I mean, that's ridiculous to say what I just said. Fucking all. Uh, this is a pretty good record. This is a pretty good band. I believe they're really highly rated as one of the best rock bands ever. Uh, I have to check out their other records, you know, this is, I believe this is their best record by a mile. But I'm still open to review their other records, although, what I didn't like about this record is that some of the transitions were kind of useless, and I think that, you know, the, uh, the vocalists, or, you know, not having any vocals on, on their records, or not having any vocals on their entire career is kind of questionable for me, because of the lobbies of vocals, and they don't have that. So they kind of missed something for me, but I still I still really like this record. So I'm gonna give this record a 9.4, and you know me not giving it uh, a 10 because because of transitions and not having any vocals is not ever going to give them a 10 because I believe they are a um, you know a vocal less um, band. I'm not sure if you say it like that vocal less, but uh, you know correct me in the comments if you will. Just, or, you know, an instrumental band. Uh, I'm not sure if they are an instrumental band, but that can be the case. I'm not sure what the vocalist means, but instrumental, there we go. I'm not sure if they are, they are an instrumental band or if they actually have vocals, but you guys can let me know in the comments down below. Still a very, very great rating, still really enjoyed the record. So let me know what you guys thought about it in the comments down below. I've been on, so hope you've enjoyed this video. God bless you, take care. Subscribe to this channel, on some more videos like the one. Like the video, same thing. And, yeah listen to this record it is really really long but it is pretty good so there we go hope you've enjoyed it and peace